Now to make our blackberry wine, I'll be using the following. I have four pounds of previously frozen blackberries. I have four cups of sugar, plain white granulated sugar. I'll be using the juice of one quarter of a lemon. And this lemon is going to act as our acid blend substitute, which will provide a little bit of acidity to our wine. I'll be using one black tea bag. And the black tea bag is going to help us to provide some little bit of tannin to our wine, which provides a little bit of astringency on the back end later on. I'm going to be using a Red Star Premier Rouge wine yeast. Now, of course, once again, if you don't have wine yeast, this still works. Speaking of bread yeast, we're going to be using a half a teaspoon of regular active dry bread yeast. Now, the bread yeast is going to be used as a yeast nutrient for our wine yeast later on. It would be helpful, although not essential, to have a couple of straining bags. We want to have at least one gallon of clean filtered water at the ready. We want to have a wide mouth fermenter available, something with a nice wide opening so we can get our straining bags into. We want to have a smaller one gallon, or in this case, four liter carboy, which we will then use later on to rack or transfer the contents of our, our juice from one container to another for the long secondary hall. In this case, I'm using a recycled wine jug. We'll need an airlock with bung. That airlock is going to be used to allow CO2 to escape from our carboy and keep bugs from getting in. We're going to need at least an eight quart pot with lid. It would be helpful, although not essential, to have a hydrometer with testing tube. And being an Amazon affiliate, you can find links in the comment and description sections for most of the equipment that I'm using in this video. And that's what I'm going to be using to make this wine. Now, the first thing we want to do is that we want to give our berries a quick rinse. You never can tell what's done and what on these berries. And it gives us an opportunity to find those berries that, quite frankly, you might not want to eat or those that have stems still attached. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of that. And now let's get these into straining bags. Let's go ahead and tie this off. All right, let's move on to the next step. Now to get started on our tannin slash yeast nutrient combination, first thing we want to do is we want to pour off, getting as much of the water in the pan as possible, just about, oh, I don't know, half a cup-ish, of our water, drop in our tea bag, and let's bring that up to a simmer. Let's go ahead and add in about half of our remaining water into our large pot. First, we will see it now by our kids. So, we are at that. Yeah, you can add about the enemies, or thank you so much. And that is roughly about half of, of, our, of our container. And the next thing we want to do is put our lid back on, turn the stove on, and let's bring that up to a boil. Now that our tea has come to a simmer and our water has come to a boil, let's go ahead and do a couple of things. One, let's turn off the heat. to both and in our tea mixture, let's go ahead and add in our half a teaspoon of bread yeast. Now, of course, the bread yeast needs to be in a dead state in order for it to act as a yeast nutrient to our, our wine yeast, or if you're using bread yeast for fermentation, that yeast. But the high temperature of the tea will kill it, making it more effective. In our other pot, we want to go ahead, since we've got hot water, we want to go ahead and add in our 
sugar. Taking advantage of the heat to help this more easily dissolve our sugar. We're going to incorporate that. And we can then go ahead and drop in without making a milling. Closer. Our berries. And see, that's how we've got a little extra juice here. Let's go ahead and add that in too. With that having been done, let's go ahead and put our lid back on. And let's let that come down to room temperature. Now, the reason why we're putting our berries in hot water, for those of you who have not seen any of my other videos, is because since we don't use sulfites on this channel, we need a way of effectively killing off any wild yeast that might have been on the berries, and to some extent, killing off any harmful bacteria that was also present on the berries. And now that I think about it, since the yeast is now already in a dead state because of the heat, we can go ahead and add in our mixture to our other pot. And now we can let this come down to room temperature. We let this blackberry mixture come down to room temperature. Actually, I just let it sit out overnight because I was busy. So I want to do one good squeeze of these bags to help extract a little bit of juice. Nice good squeeze. And then we want to temporarily remove these bags. Let them drain a little bit. And the other one. And the reason for that is that when we pour the remaining juice into our fermenter, it does have a mark or indicated for one gallon. And I want to make sure I get at least one gallon of juice. And not have that number wrong because of the straining bags. So let's go ahead and pour it in our juice. And it looks like I'm coming up a little bit short. Since this is still coming out, let's carefully add in some of our juice from here. And with that remaining water that we had from earlier, that water, I want to go ahead and add in enough to bring our level up a bit. which for me was about there, leaving a little bit left. Put off to the side. That having been done, I want to go ahead and since I have an opportunity, we can give this a good swish. I will be doing that again later on. I want to go ahead and add in our berries again. And again, not wanting to lose any potential wine to be, go ahead and put those in. Following that, I'm going to go ahead and add in our lemon juice slash acid blend substitute. If you've got a strainer, that would be helpful. because We really don't want to get any seeds in there. Let's go ahead and squeeze that in. Just a good squeeze. You don't have to scrape off the sides or anything. Let's get that out the way.
And one last good squeeze or one last good stir. So why am I doing that? Well, when we put in our yeast momentarily, the yeast will need some oxygen to get itself going in the in the beginning. So we're just trying to help it out a little bit by just putting in just a little bit more oxygen in the mix. I'm gonna go ahead and put my lid back on for a moment because what I wanna do now is take a hydrometer reading. All right, let's take the lid back off. And using my dedicated wine thief here, let's go ahead and fill up our tube. Now, yeah, this fermenter does have a spigot on the front of it, and it would have been a whole lot easier just to use it instead of this, but you might not have a spigot in the front. Oh, that's right, too high. A little bit more. All right, looks like our hydrometer reading is coming in at 1.080, right on the money. All right, let's go ahead and pour that back in. Set that carefully off to the side. And just to be on the safe side one last time. Because the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and add in our yeast. Again, this time around I'm using about half a teaspoon. And we just want to go ahead and sprinkle that around. And put our lid back on. Nice and tight. It is now time to label our creation. We are making a blackberry wine. We started it on this date in our original or starting gravity or the amount of sugar we started with in, in our in our in our juice was 1.080. Now over the course of the next few days we want to make sure that our straining bags are submerged. If not submerged, then at least turn them over. And if you're not using straining bags, you might want to punch down that fr fruit cap that's going to be floating on the top. Now we're going to keep the bags in for five to seven days and we're going to pull those out. And then at that time I will probably rack or transfer everything from the primary fermenter into one of the secondary carboys that we saw earlier and continue the process from there. And that process will consist of racking, begassing, back sweetening, pasteurization, bottling, corking, capping, labeling, and of course, all of these videos I've got as standalone videos on my winemaking process playlist on my channel page. You can check those out there. That being the case, this is our Blackberry wine that we'll be tasting in 12 months time. So 12 months from now, uh, I'll see you.